For this application, I'm using a wood finish which has some stain in it. Uh, much like the watercolor wash and wipe, uh, we're going to add the wood finish to it and then wipe off the excess. This is an experiment, or experiment, so if it turns out, that's great. If it doesn't, it's a learning experience. So I've already shaken up the wood finish to medium brown. I'm going to take a paper towel for my applicator. You can see that the finish is a fairly dark brown. And I am pushing it into the design, much like I did with the watercolor. But the clay accepts the color very well. And if you want the color to be more intense where the design is, you can push a little more wood finish in those areas. Let it set just a second. And where the wood finish is setting into the design, it will be darker. You almost get an appearance that looks like uh, uh, weathered leather. Um, I'll let this dry and I'll probably shoot a, a coat of polyurethane with it. But that is wood finish and I know most people don't have that but if you want to try it and you do have that on hand, that's an option. For this next technique, <clears throat> I'm going to use heat and I'm going to demonstrate both with a blowtorch and I realize most of you don't have these uh, tools that's fine but you can do them in your oven too just set it on broil and keep a really close eye on it but let me show you what heat does to the projects okay so we have our pressed in design torch. And notice how I'm using a, an aluminum can to extend it over the top of my cardboard so I don't create a fire hazard. Where the flame is hitting the top, it will get nice and toasty brown. Recessed areas will not be that brown. torch is acting up. Now here is what the, it got a little bit too brown on one side, but it gives a nice toasty brown finish. I can leave it like it is or I can give it a shiny finish with polyurethane spray and I'll show that to you in just a second. Here's another footprint that I did with the blowtorch. 
Here are three projects that I showed you. Uh, one with the acrylic paint and then two of them with the blowtorch to give them the toasty finish. I'm going to be using a polyurethane stain, or not a polyurethane stain, but a polyurethane spray to give it a, a, a shiny finish and it will also seal the clay. So this clay is, or this spray has been nicely sh shaken. Again, notice how I have my workspace clean. I'm working on a piece of cardboard so I'm not damaging the tabletop that I'm working on. I'm going to give it a nice even spray over the top. Notice how I'm not just pointing it and spraying it. It's always just a movement so you're not concentrating the spray on one particular area. Now after it's been sprayed, it needs to sit and uh, dry and become firm. And tomorrow during class, I'll show you the finished results. Here are three examples of flower clay projects done underneath the broiler in an oven. The one on the right hand side, the dog paw, about right, maybe a little dark. The footprint in the sand, uh, left a little bit too long. <laughs> and then the one on the left, uh, the other dog print, I forgot all about it. Um, maybe set off some smoke alarms, but that's way too dark. But these are examples of what you can do just putting your projects underneath the broiler. If you want to make your projects browned or golden brown using the broiler, this is what not to do. I turned on the broiler and got it going, put my project in, and then I got preoccupied uh, answering emails and doing other things. So this is the result. Oh, see the smoke? And there's my example that I wanted to show you, which is not going to work very well. So if you're going to use this technique, please keep an eye on the oven or else you're going to have one big black charred mess.